Alright, gonna do a video debunking Ed Fettinger's phony dispensationalism on, and heresy on the book of James. And for the record, I'm gonna say this is not a video trying to correct Ed Fettinger, because I believe he's beyond able to be corrected. I mean, he's been corrected so many times that he just, he won't take correction. I mean, he just comes out and says, oh, you're confused, you're confused. I mean, if you look at his videos, everyone's confused except for him. So, this is not trying to correct Ed Fettinger, because again, again, I believe he's, he's beyond able to be corrected. Uh, he, he's just too prideful, but... This is mostly just to warn people about Ed Fenninger and his dangerous heresy that salvation has always been by faith alone, it will always be by faith alone, and it always has been by faith alone. It's ridiculous. And Ed Fenninger, because they can't handle the book of James, which debunks their whole system, so they have to find a way to explain away the book of James. And they and you're going to see the arguments he uses are just ridiculous. And, and, and he actually proves that he's not a dispensationalist because he takes Pauline epistle stuff and applies it to different dispensations. It's ridiculous. So let's get right into refuting this heretical nonsense. Good evening. In this video, I want to deal with the issue of the book of James and who is it written to. And that is one of the crucial issues for the faith, what I call boasters group, faith works, that they've got to put James as only to tribulational saints in the uh, no, tribulation. Okay, so Fenninger says that, oh, they're saying that James is written to tribulational saints. Okay, give me a verse in the book of James that says it's written for us today. Chapter and verse, please. Let's continue. He did have Hebrews as well. Uh, as well. I'm going to read from uh, James Knox book, this little booklet here. I'm going to begin here uh, are the general epistles for the church. And uh, this is this material is prepared as an appendix to James, Brother James' book, New Testament Service. So you can probably find that in that book as an appendix. Uh, this is the first printing of 2000. Since the first edition of this work was published in 1994, the debate over the application of the doctrine of material in the general epistles to the church has intensified. Ever since Martin Luther threatened to light his stove with James, students of the word have stumbled over the demands for holiness made by God in the general epistles. General epistles are not contradictory to Paul. So he says the general epistles are not contradictory to Paul. Huh? So basically James, which is written to the 12 tribes, is not contradictory to Paul because Romans chapter 11 verse 13 and Romans 15 to 16, or Romans chapter 15 verse 16 say that Paul is to the Gentiles and James is to the 12 tribes and somehow that's not contradictory. Um, and, and he used the argument, well, the, uh, the, the believers were, were primarily Jews early on, uh, okay, but Paul is to the Gentiles, okay, 12, 12 tribes are not part of the Gentiles. Again, I'm getting ahead of myself, but... Um, where does Paul warn people about not taking the mark of the beast? Because in John's epistles, he's warning about not taking the mark of the beast. And I mean, there's so many ways of how they, uh, at certain epistles, they contradict what Paul says. Ridiculous. And again, just Fenninger is just doing anything he can to explain away James chapter 2, which debunks this whole system. It's ridiculous. Let's continue. They compliment Paul. And they show a walk. First John is talking about a walk. So this is a common argument for Fenninger and, and, and heretics like that is either so when you confront when you confront them with verses that talk about dispensational salvation, they'll either say, "Well, that's talking about physical salvation," or they'll say it's talking about your walk. You know, like Matthew twenty four thirteen, which says, "He that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved." Well, that's talking about your walk, or it's talking about your physical salvation. You know, they have to explain it with the text. So they have, to, they have to add stuff to scripture, like they have to add physical salvation, they have to add, oh, it's talking about your walk. Uh, where does it say that anywhere in the verse, that it's about your walk? You know, it's ridiculous. They have to add to scripture. They'll do anything they can to explain it with the text. And which is why I believe that this, this is not just deception. This is actually what this it, it is deception, but there's actually a lying spirit in this guy to just twist the scriptures the way he does. Ridiculous. Let's continue. And these guys all want to make it keeping the law, keeping the law, keeping the law. So it's, you know, it's, uh, no, it's, you're supposed to walk and show your faith. So Fenrir makes this argument that, oh, keeping your law, you know, you're not supposed to keep the law. You know, he, he's supposed to be attacking the notion of keeping the law to be saved. Uh, Revelation 14, 12, you know, talks about how you have to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Revelation 14, 12. Um, what about back in the, in the, under the law of Moses? You had, you had to do an animal sacrifice, you know. Uh, let me pull up some scriptures on that. Uh, Exodus chapter 20, 29, verse 36 to 37. Exodus chapter 30, verse 11 to 16. Exodus chapter 4, verse 20 to 26. Exodus, or not Exodus, Leviticus chapter 4, verse 20 to 26. Leviticus chapter 5, verse 15 to 19. Leviticus chapter 14, verse 17 to 21. Leviticus chapter 5, verse 10 to, 10 to 13. Leviticus chapter 17, verse 10 to 12. On and on and on. Talk about how the animal sacrifice is an atonement for the souls. 
So it was by faith alone, even though he needed an animal sacrifice. And he'll go over this thing of how, oh, well, Abraham was saved by faith alone. And again, the book of James debunks that, but he, he can't handle the text, so he has to explain it away somehow. So again, um, it wasn't by keeping the law. Okay, then what was the point of animal sacrifices? You know, what was the point of having to give a, an animal sacrifice to atone for the sins if you didn't have to keep the commandments? If it was by faith alone, you know, it's ridiculous. He, he just he can't handle the text. That's what it comes down to. He cannot handle the text. Let's continue. Some men in churches will now break fellowship with someone who agrees with, with them on all essential doctrines, yet does not banish the doctrinal content of Hebrews through Jew to the Great Tribulation. This is where to start it, people. It didn't start with us, the faith alone people. It started with these guys. So Fanninger says the faith alone people. Okay, give me a chapter and verse that says faith alone. Okay? The Bible says in Ephesians 2 8 9, by grace through faith. If you read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 9, it says that you're saved by grace through faith. Where does it say faith alone? You know? Again, He's not proving a point. He's just saying, oh, faith alone. And again, he's having to add terms to scripture. It's ridiculous. What does the Bible say? You know, add thou not unto thy word. Ridiculous. Let's continue. They're the ones who are making this a war and an issue. And they're trying to take over dispensational theology by saying, if you don't believe what they believe over these things, you're not dispensationalist. Uh, you know what the most hypocritical thing about that is? Fenier does the same thing. You know, if you believe in dispensational salvation, you're, you're not a real dispensationalist. You know, he did, he did a video on, on uh, Brian, and you know, I don't agree with Brian on everything, but he had a video called The Phony Dispensationalism of Brian Dillinger. Fenninger does the same thing he's accusing us of. I mean, hypocrite? I mean, it's ridiculous. Again, he can't, he's, he's full of pride. He can't see his own hypocrisy. Let's continue. That's what they're claiming. So on one hand, they're claiming peace, peace. You know, let's have peace with the son of the issue. On the other hand, they're the ones saying, oh, we got the real Bible. We're, we're the Bible believers. We're the ones we learned the Bible. You guys don't know what you're talking about. That's why, you know, we'll, we'll break it, try to sneak it in there with Ezekiel 18. They can't stop it. Of course, Fenninger has to go after Ezekiel 18, because again, Ezekiel 18 proves a workspace system in the Old Testament. It says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Fenninger says, oh, it's talking about physical salvation. Um, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Talking about your soul dying. Um, how is that physical salvation? Let me show you that. Ezekiel... Um, Ezekiel chapter 18, I think I forget the verse, uh, let me try to find the verse. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse uh, 4. Behold, all souls are mine, as the soul of the Father, so also is the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Talking about your soul dying. Um, how is this walk, your, your walk or your physical salvation? Uh, the soul is dying if, you, if it uh, commits sin. Uh, let me try to go down to verse 20. Ezekiel 18, 20, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. And of course, you jump down to, again, verse 24. But when the righteous man, turn, or when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and commit iniquity, a righteous man here turning away from his righteousness, uh, and doeth all according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteous, all his righteousness that that he hath done shall not be mentioned. And his trespass that he had trespassed, and his sin that he had sinned, in them shall he die. It's talking about a righteous man here dying in his sins, dying in his trespasses. Um, how is this physical salvation? You're dying in your trespasses, and you go to hell. You know, he can't handle the text. He cannot handle the text. Let's continue. They won't put this aside. This is a major issue for them. These men who so desperately need the ad 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 admonitions to love in 1 John to show grace in 1 Peter will call you everything from a heretic to a devil if you seek to apply the general epistles to the church. It should blow you up. So according to Fenninger, the epistles of John and the epistles of James are to the church. Okay. Um, where does it say that anywhere in, in the epistle of James or the epistle of John? Where does it say it's to the church? You know? I mean, and what I mean by that is that to the Gentiles, because he's saying, he's basically saying that they are for us in the sense that Paul is writing for us, you know, because again, Romans 11, 13 and Romans 15, 16 say that Paul is our apostle to the Gentiles. So he's saying that the general epistles are also written for us today, and he's supposedly a dispensationalist. That's not called, that's not rightly divided in the word of truth. He's applying to all the epistles for us today. Uh, that's not dispensationalism. That's non-dispensationalism. Let me show you some proof on that. Um, let me try James chapter 1 verse number 1 because he's saying it's to the church it's to the church James James chapter 1 verse number 1 James the servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad greeting um, 
the church, Paul is to the Gentiles. Okay, Gentiles are not part of the twelve tribes. So how is this to how is this also to for us today? It's ridiculous. Again, he's doing anything he can to explain away the text. He cannot handle the text. So and so the devils that are inside of him are trying to get him to just just do these mental acrobatics to explain it away. That's why he has to apply all the general epistles for us today. Because he, he because they contradict Paul, so they, he has to say, well, well, they're well, they're for us today, and he has to twist the scriptures to make it so. It's like uh, Breaker does, just like Denley does, it's like uh, Hoffman does, just like uh, Kim does. They all do. They blow you off. They've got oh, they've got to settle. James is definitely to you know twelve tribes of Israel. It's definitely see that's the East, that's the Jews tribulation. They got it all figured out. Justification, that's what uh, Abraham was justified by works. See, James chapter 2. You see, I was just mocking the word of God. Abraham was justified by works, James chapter 2. Um, that's what it says. Let me show you the verse. Because he always, because Romans 4 is funny because Ed Fenninger is again claimed to be a dispensationalist, but he takes Romans 4 and Romans 3 and applies it to every disp dispensation. It's ridiculous. Uh, James chapter 2, verse, I think it's verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? <laughs> justified by works, and again, words walk talking about your walk or your physical salvation. Where does it say that in the text? It says you're justified by works. And then quote that in verse 24. You see then how by works a man is justified and not by faith only. That's why Fenrir gets so mad about this passage. You know, he cannot handle he, like he that's why he has to say, well, you know, it's 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 talking about you know showing your faith by your works. I mean, he can't handle it. You know, he's just proving to me he can't handle the text. And I know, obviously, I'm repeating myself, but it's just ridiculous. So uh, I could go through the whole video, but he just he just goes over the same ridiculous arguments. Uh, don't be deceived by Ed Fittinger's phony dispensationalism. Uh, it's false. Uh, the thing of and, and I've shown a clip in the past in one of my past videos where he literally says that taking the, that refusing to market the beast is not part of your salvation. It's an act of faith. So basically. What he's essentially implying is that you can take the mark and you're still eternally secure. Even though Revelation 14, 9 to 11 says if any man takes it, they get God's wrath and go to the lake of fire. So, I mean, he, he, he's so messed up. And again, I believe it's actually devil spirits that are like making him say these things. It's ridiculous. I mean, for him, him just to, to, to basically deny and try to twist scriptures that debunk his claims. And again, this is not trying to correct him because he, I think he's beyond correcting. I mean, he cannot, he just will not take correction. He just, it just, it just, Everyone's confused. Everyone's confused except for Ed Fenninger. You know, he's the one one person in the body of Christ that is not confused. It's ridiculous. Don't be deceived by Ed Fenninger or his phony dispensationalism. God bless you. Goodbye.